good evening, Vixens family, and welcome to a premiership edition of Vixens Live. My name's Pete Laser. Once again, a pleasure to be your host for Vixens Live, our final episode of the year. I've even had a haircut to celebrate. That's how exciting the last week has been. We're going to celebrate all things Melbourne Vixens over the next little while. It has been a huge 2020 on court, and what better way to wrap up the season than with a premiership? We'll be talking all things Vixens Premiership very, very soon. Unfortunately, the trophy is still in transit on its way back from Queensland. But as soon as we're allowed to gather, there will be a huge celebration. We'll get everyone together with the team and celebrate what has been a truly unique 2020 season. Tonight's Vixens Live show is proudly brought to you by Flight Centre. Wake up winning with Flight Centre, our trusty travel partner who can help you pivot and score with flexible booking options and fee-free changes. Well, every week I am joined by a special guest and we thought this week, being the Premiership edition, we should get a two-time Premiership champion to come and join us, a Vixens Games record holder back in Melbourne. It's a very warm welcome to Vixens Live, to Tegan. Tegan Corbell, Tegan Phillip, Teague's the dual Premiership player. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. I told you I'd pump you up at the start. It doesn't get bigger than being a... <laughs> Premiership play, a dual Premiership player. Now, how does it feel? You did so well all those years ago, and then six years later, in your last game with your favourite club, the Melbourne Vixens, you're going out with a bang with a Premiership. How does it feel? Oh, it's amazing. So exciting. Couldn't believe it after the game. I was saying to one of the girls, I was like, this just happened. Like, we just won. This just happened. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, an awesome experience and one that I certainly won't be forgetting. We've talked to you through the year. We've talked to all the players and coaching staff throughout the year. It has been truly unique. Now that the dust has settled a little bit and you're back home, you're in the familiar surrounds, looking back, talk us through 2020. <laughs> Just, I don't even know where to start. Like, it's so crazy. Like, <laughs> we started the year normal and then there was conversations around, you know, we might not be able to train soon. We weren't really sure what was happening. Out of nowhere, we're in lockdown and the VIS are handing out all of the equipment they have at the gym there so everyone could be training at home. And then we're doing VR, um, yeah, our gym sessions in our garage and running sessions by ourselves and then court sessions in our driveways on Zoom. And we'd come into the computer that I had, like my laptop set up on a wheelie bin and then a box. And I'd come in and have a look. The coaches just show us what we're doing. Then I'd go lay my cones out. And then they're trying to yell out, 30 seconds, change now. And it was like, I can't believe we were doing that. And then we packed and we were ready to go. And then we weren't going. And then we were going. And then we weren't going. And then it was like a Saturday, I think. And they um, text us and we're like, all right, we're going tomorrow. <laughs> like, it just happened like that. We're like, okay, lucky I've got my bags packed and um, went into quarantine with still thought we were going for like eight, nine weeks. And three months later, I've made it home. <laughs> you've made it home and you've come home with a premiership medal. Where is the premiership medal? Surely it yes, can't be too far away. Yes, I have it here. Look at <laughs> it. You've got it right next to Yeah, put it yeah. on. Look at that. There you go. Looks pretty Look good. That. And not your first one either. There you go. I mean, there's a lot of hard work that goes into a little bit of metal around your neck. Yeah. How does it yeah, feel now yeah. that it, it is real. Like you talk about the, the sacrifices you've made, the sacrifice your husband and family make and all the families and, and partners and so forth, all those sacrifices is for what's hanging around your neck. How does that feel now? Yeah, it's it's amazing. And I still, um, you know, these last few days, uh, it's playing through my mind how that game <laughs> finished, how we uh, celebrated at the end, how I just went and jumped on Katie Thwaites' back from behind. She didn't even know I was coming. So all of that, I'm still thinking about those things um, and ha have those memories and it's it's just so special and it happened, really. It happened. Oh, it happened. No doubt the Vix men taking some credit for it as well. They've been <laughs> big supporters, especially of you, but of all the Melbourne Vixens. Yeah, it's been awesome to have them and I um, have, you know, mentioned them a couple of times. Uh, their cre creativity and entertainment that they've provided is, uh, yeah, of quality. Absolutely it is. Now, speaking of quality, when it gets to premiership celebrations, we always like to know 
who celebrated the biggest, hardest, best? Who got the votes for the celebration on the Sunday and Monday <laughs> night? Yeah, because we did have to do, we had the Sunday night celebrations and then we had our Sherelle McMahon on the Monday. So mm, it's a good question. There was a few stragglers coming in at the early hours, I think, on the uh, <laughs> the Monday morning. But um, you know what? My roomie, I'm going to give a shout out to my roomie because she, I may have smoke bombed early-ish and she pushed on and she came in at whatever time it was. Um, but yeah, certainly girls are celebrating the season and the year that we've had. I don't think there has ever been a more fitting way to celebrate than altogether winning a premiership and away. I, you don't deserve this present, this celebration after a premiership. Don't worry about that. So we are talking all things Vixens Premiership. Great to have you as co-host on Vixens Live. Of course, tonight we wanted to take a look back at last Sunday's Grand Final, Suncorp Super Netball Grand Final. It was our Melbourne Vixens taking on West Coast Fever. What a match it was to watch. Before we get stuck into it with you, Tees, take a look at some of those amazing highlights. That again. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, there's Marley the whole time. <laughs> I was doing exactly the same thing. You can't not smile. I mean, I know it makes it, it it's easy when you know the result. Jeez, that was that was some game. How did it feel from a, a playing perspective? Obviously, you came on during the game, but did it have that that feeling that how intense it was just watching from the couch? Yeah, it is. It was intense. It was hard. It was physical. Um, but we just had to knuckle down and that's what we did. And even right to the end when it was so close, uh, we, you know, got that rebound and managed to keep possession of the ball and took that win that we wanted. It was unbelievable. And scores level. So we're down at quarter time, down at half time. Scores are level with 90 seconds to go. MJ gives us a one point advantage. That rebound from M and Joe really, Transition yep. all the way down, and just maintaining the ball. I know it's something that you train for, but training is one thing. Executing it like that, that is, I mean, Simone McKinnis doesn't give away chainsaw celebrations easily. <laughs> no, and we've been doing a fair bit of work at training about the 30 seconds, 45 seconds possession. At some point we did do a minute and we were no good at it. Um, yeah. So the fact that, you know, there was that, minute 90 seconds to go and i think partly we actually couldn't get the ball down court as well though and fever were doing a really good job of blocking it up but the girls were smart enough with their 
um, ball movement and options and we were able to, able to play it around and then we did eventually, I don't know, I was sitting on the bench just pointing like, come on, get it down, get it down. Like it's our center pass next. Like we're good. Um, and they, you know, I, I eventually got the ball moved down and um, scored that goal, which which gave us the next center pass. And once we got that uh, that rebound, the, I was sitting behind the coaches and they all just kind of put their hands in there their faces like didn't want to look um, because we'd just taken possession. It was such a crucial moment for us. So um, yeah, there was, there was lots going on. It's funny, isn't it? All the coaching, all the training in the world, it needs to be executed on this big stage in the big moments. And, and that's, that's what we did. And we did it throughout the whole game and for 60 minutes and full credit to West Coast Fever, who were fantastic as well. But even looking at some of the stats that come from the grand final, Shooting accuracy of 95%. Liz Watson, a grand final record of 57 feeds, 38 assists. I mean, Teague, you, you shot at 100% as well. Don't worry about that. We'll sneak that one in there as well. Add that to the resume as well. I'll take I mean, it. I'll take it. Talk, but for all the talk of super shots and rolling subs and extended benches and lists and everything else that was going on, this was just a classic, intense super game of netball. Yeah, it was. And, you know, Bianca asked me after the game, when did you think you needed to go for the two point shots? And I was, I just, they just weren't that influential in the game either. Like, you know, we took a couple, they took a couple. Um, but it was just the good old fundamentals of the game that we persisted with and got through. And even in that first quarter, like, we just couldn't get ball because we're up against Fever. They have Janiel Fowler. It's such a tough gig. But it was, you know, the talk was we just need to persist. And in that second quarter, that's when our opportunity started to come. And then we just needed to continue to persist. And, you know, we got that turn from um, MJ, which got us that one goal up. And it's just all of those little crucial moments um, that we just needed to nail. But it was being consistent and having any time we had possession with the ball, it was so important for us to score. See, there's a lot of belief. You can, again, you can train for whatever you like, but you need to believe in the system, believe in each other. And whomever happens to be on court, Kate Eddy playing with half a foot as she gets out of a moon boot, runs around for three and a half quarters. That's Smith running on with a couple of minutes to go in a grand oh. final in the first season. I mean, these are the stories that, that come through. But you, in the last couple of minutes of the first half, I was throwing things at the TV. I made sure I only had cushions and soft objects around. But you right. needed to... You need to go through, I mean, it's swings and roundabouts, isn't it? You can be have all the momentum and then the momentum goes against you and you need to still have belief in the system. Yeah, and when Janelle nailed that two-pointer just before half time, that took, I think that maybe that levelled the scores then or something like that. Like that was a crucial moment for them and I actually thought that was glad that it came when it did because if that came during the quarter, that could have been such a crucial moment that they were so fired up and got going. So it was great that we could go into that half time, have our 15 minutes break, refocus, talk about what we needed to talk about, address it, and then go out into that third quarter, really firing and ready to go. See, there was a few text messages going back and forth, myself and a few of the mates about taking momentum into half time. It always seems a weird one from a non-playing point of view in any sport, because you can't really have momentum over a 15 minute break. You can. <laughs> feel good about your first half but I, I thought if we stick with them in the first half our intensity and our pressure I mean how are the girls feeling at the end of the game I know a premiership means a celebration is always going to be pretty good I can't imagine anyone stayed awake after nine o'clock I was tired and I didn't do anything <laughs> it's so exhausting but I think the adrenaline just continues it just takes over and you're just so happy and pumped I mean um it, it got I didn't even play out the whole game and I was, uh, you know, ready for bed at 9 p.m. But <laughs> that's okay. Um, so, yeah, it's just such a full-on game to partake in, to watch as well when it's that close. Um, but you know what? That just goes out the door and you're just so happy and excited um, afterwards. The crowd, the crowd has been not against us all year, but they certainly haven't been on our side every time we play Lightning or Firebirds, that's for sure. But... All of a sudden, it just seemed there was a bit of a, a sentimental feel about the bit, which I, I must say, in no part, thanks to you and Katie, even though we don't get to thank you again for running out of the court, but it just seemed there was a bit of groundswell 
of support for the Vixens. Did you feel that, even though I'm sure you'd rather be at Melbourne Arena, of course? Yeah, would obviously have rather been at home. But when we were out there and they, um, I just remember the MC calling on, you know, uh, West Coast supporters cheering and then Vixen supporters cheering. And I was, it was so much louder for us. And I was like, oh, that's so nice that um, we did really feel that the crowd was getting around us and supporting us and wanting to get the win. And um, so, yeah, that was, um, yeah, really, really nice to have that crowd support. And we did feel that while we were um, playing as well. 66 64 it's a scoreline you remember forever talk us through your coach you've known her for a very very long time Bellarine peninsula sisters down you go but she's been a fantastic coach and adds another premiership to her ever increasing resume how was simone and the coaching staff after the final whistle uh, well we all saw a little chainsaw move so that showed a fair bit how she was feeling I think how she many, was how many, just... saws, hang on, how many chainsaws were done that night? On Sunday night, <laughs> how know. many chainsaws were done? I, they might have popped out a few more times over the next couple of days, actually. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, I like it. And maybe forever. It's my yeah, favourite gift. It. I know, right? Um, no, she's just so passionate for the club. And, you know, it had been six years since we'd won last. So I think um, she just, yeah was so pumped for it and so relieved afterwards as well and excited and I'm going through all those emotions as well. But um yeah, no, she's uh she's a quality coach and it's been great to have her at the club. We've seen that you get quality coach, quality players and quality staff around and all of a sudden this is the result that we get. Great to have you here, Teagues. And we thought as we have on every episode of Vixen's Live, we've been lucky enough throughout the year, every week Great access to the players. We really thank you and all the team for coming on, sharing a bit of an insight to what was going on in the Queensland hub. And again, being a Premiership Celebration Edition, we thought we'd head, well, not up to Queensland now, we're going to head to the home of one of our players, not just one of our players, but someone who you're pretty close to as well, certainly in a physical sense in the shooting circle, but also you've known her throughout her whole career and was now joins you as a player of the match in a grand final. It doesn't get any bigger and better than that. So let's welcome to Vixens Live, everyone's favourite Malawi, and could in fact be the Queen of Malawi for all we know now. It's been unbelievable. <laughs> it's a very warm welcome to Maui Kumwenda. Welcome back to Vixens Live. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Hello, Peter. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. After watching you shoot on Sunday, I am just fine. Thanks very much. I was mesmerised by your performance. How does it feel after everything you've been through to be now a Melbourne Vixens it, Premiership player? Yeah, it feels good to win and it's all about hard working and I'm just proud of the girls and also we just need to thank the coaches for the good job they did for us. It wasn't so long ago that you weren't even out on a netball court, you were going through rehab, something that my co-host tonight knows about as well. It's a long path back, but all of a sudden, with that premiership medal around your neck, all the hard work, does it has it paid off? Do you feel that all the hard work is now worth it? Yeah, it's now worth it because when you win, it's always like, uh, it's always uh, great for everything. So yeah, I was very proud for the team. And um, yeah, so it's good to win. Oh, it's always good to win. Now, did you celebrate with a little champagne or maybe a white wine? I heard a rumor. Not a big drinker, MJ, but I did hear a rumor. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh my god! After <laughs> after the day before, I was sick, so I was like, "Oh, how did the girls deal with this?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's after winning, so it's absolutely fine. Teagues, I'll ask you, what has it been like seeing the journey of MJ from Malawi? And we've heard the story many times. It's a wonderful story. And then all of a sudden, a, a knee like becomes a fan favourite. Then a, a knee injury, which can rule people out for many, many years, and can come back. Not as, and then to come back, not just play as well as you did, but to be unbelievable in that shooting circle in the grand final. Teagues, but tell me what it's like from close quarters. What? Tell us about MJ. Well, you can all see how amazing she is out on court. How she jumps so high, pulls balls in from nowhere. Um, 
when she shoots, sometimes she says good shot to herself. Or <laughs> sometimes when she's on a hold, she goes, throw it, I can jump, I can jump. So the way she talks to her players and demands that ball just gives us so much confidence to deliver it into her. And then the way she um, went through her ACL recovery and that was at the VIS. So we were always in there. Um, when we were training, she was in there doing all everything she needed to do. And just how she's continued to do her exercises before the games to make sure she's ready to go. Um, and yeah, she's been a really disciplined and now reaping the rewards of her hard work, dominating in the grand final and giving us some of these. Hey, MJ. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know how I did that, Jake. I don't know. No? No? <laughs> Oh, so I don't good. know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> hey MJ, tell us how what it was like playing in that in our um, the grand final match. Yeah, um, it was hard battle there playing against like um, best players in the world. Like um, Bruce, she's a very tough player, and always when you are playing against her, you just need to give everything. Um, yeah, it was. I was so nervous to play because this is my first experience for me to play on grand final. So. Uh, it was good to see the girls like uh, encouraging each other and yeah we can go through this so that was good to get a win but it was a tough yeah. battle it was you did so well and it you know so much hard work that you've put in and everyone else has put in how did you feel when they called your name for the mvp for the, for the <laughs> best player of the match tell me what were you thinking when they said your name because i saw your face and I was, it was a massive smile. You couldn't believe it. I was watching. Tell me what you thought. Yeah, I couldn't believe that I can be a player of the match. Um, yeah, I was very excited because um, that's why I say it's like, uh, it's teamwork, everything. I'm just proud of the girls because without you girls, I couldn't win um, the award. So yeah, it was exciting to be a player of the match. And yeah, the hard work we do with the girls. So that was good. Wow, you deserved it. So great job. Now, what are you going to do um, now that the season's over? When do you get to go back to Malawi? I assume you're going to go at some point. Yeah, hopefully, because I, I'm still in Brisbane. Um, I'm living with the family. I was living with them. My first time was uh, when I was in Australia. So I'm here for two weeks. Then um, after two weeks, I'll go back to Melbourne. Uh, hopefully, fingers are crossed if we can find flights to go back to Malawi, maybe second week of November. Yeah, we are hoping. So maybe I can see my mom because I miss my mom. <laughs> well, that I was just about to. What are you looking forward to most about going back home? But um, obviously, that's seeing your mom, which is so lovely, and no doubt she misses you um, when you're over here in Australia. And then we miss you when you go back to Malawi. I know. And when I go back to Malawi, I start speaking my own language. So when I came over here, the girls they can't understand me. So I'll try my best to speak English every time. <laughs> What about, is there a chance for a wedding when you go back, MJ? You can't have a wedding without all the Vixen's teammates going That's over it. with you. Is there any, any update on wedding plans for you? Sorry, can you say that again? Oh, there, has there been any plans for a wedding? Because I know that you've been very keen getting the girl, teaching the girls how to dance for a wedding. <laughs> and I know, that, can you talk us through this? This could be a, a Vixen's live exclusive right here. <laughs> Oh, Peter. Oh, my God, you make me laugh. Uh, we don't know yet, but I'll let you know. I can't now explain it. It's hard because COVID is still there. It's COVID is still there, so it's hard. We don't know yet, um, but I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. No, we, we are all looking forward. I was the first to find out about this, and I am very much looking forward to seeing how the accountant goes with our star shooter. Uh, Something people may not know, we see the beautiful smile. We saw it after the 2015 Netball World Cup and you were named player of the, the World Cup. We've seen it now as player of the grand final. We see the Malawians dancing after a win. But your determination, your hard work, like the looks on your faces when Bruce was having elbows in your face, you do not take a backward step. You are a, a fierce competitor. Ah, uh, yes. Um... That's why I said it's hard to play against Blues um, every time because she's a very strong player. She's one of the best uh, players in the world. So I was just giving everything for my team because uh, we have been working very hard. Um, 
So I was like, oh, we need to win this time, yeah, because we don't want to be disappointed. No disappointment. Teague, what was the celebration like? How did MJ go with her celebration? Sunday night, Monday night at Sherelle McMahon Medal, and what did you get up to since then? What are the celebrations right. like, Teague? The two of us left on Sunday night together, didn't we, MJ? We just did a sneaky, <laughs> sneaky uh, off you go to bed. So yeah. we had fun with that. Um, and then we had fun on the Monday night at the Sherelle McMahon. But on the Tuesday, we went out for the day and we went to Movie World, didn't we, MJ? Yes, we did. Oh, my gosh. Never again, Peter. Never again. Tell me, oh, what happened? Good. The, oh. the first ride we went on was um, Superman, the Superman roller coaster. How'd you find that one, MJ? Oh, that was hard for me. Oh my god, I was feeling like I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Not good experience. I will never go again. And then somehow, I don't know how, we someone talked her around to going on the hyper coaster, which because it's not as bad as the Superman, but it's longer and more intense. I'm not sure how, but do you remember the second one that we went on, MJ? Uh, yes, I remember the second one because um, Jacqueline was saying like, uh, MJ, this is very easy, but that was tough. That was not easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like Seriously? crying. Like I was sitting with uh, Ketan and Ketan was just touching me. I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not That's good fantastic. experience. Uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden playing in the grand final it seems so easy compared to going on rides on a, on a Tuesday. Um, MJ, it's been a, an amazing ride. Have you, have you had a chance to think about, to look back on Sunday night or Sunday afternoon? Have you had a chance to think about the grand final? How does it feel a few days later now being a, a premiership player with the Vixens and all of your wonderful sisters, as you call them? Yeah, after we won with my sisters, I didn't believe that we won because I was like, oh my God, what's going on? And now, like a couple of days now, I can see that, oh, we got this, yeah, we got this. Yeah, because it was hard, I didn't believe that, like, oh, did we won? Like, I was like, I didn't know what's going on, like, but now, like a couple of days now, I can feel like uh, we won. Yes, we got, we did it now. So I was, I was very happy, like. Yeah, but my but Sander was like, uh, oh no, I don't know what's going on. Like, I didn't believe that we won. Yeah, but oh, now I feel like, huge... oh yes, we got this now. <laughs> you were a huge part of the success, not just on Sunday, but in all the lead up in the last few years. We have absolutely loved your story, and the best part of it is that there are still many, many chapters of your Vixen story to go, and we look forward to the next one. MJ, congratulations on being the Nissan Player of the Match, and more importantly. Congratulations on being a Melbourne Vixens Premiership player. Thank you so much. I'll miss you, Tegan. I'll miss you too, MJ. I know, I love playing with you because I've learned a lot from you. So I'll miss you. Oh, thank you. All right, thanks so much, thinking, Peter, for having me today. I was thinking you're going to miss her. You've seen her every day for the last 97 <laughs> days. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you can miss her. I know, I'll miss her. I'll miss play with her because she's always like there for me. <laughs> oh. Well, you, you've been an absolute sensation and we love seeing you, MJ. Thanks for joining us on Vixens Live. Thanks, oh, MJ. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. How oh, good. Takes. That, that's MJ right there. That's MJ. Every time. Is love it. it. Is this, there's a reason. I mean, the, the outpouring of emotion for, for yourself and Katie was fantastic and deserve it after so long. There's just certain people though, that everyone gravitates towards. The Vixens family just absolutely love and probably fair to say that MJ's right up there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, she's such a fabulous netball, that one, and thoroughly entertaining as well. Oh, absolutely. I think it's time for a quick break. We're back with more of Vixens Live and wrap up season 2020 very, very soon. The last few months have been difficult for the entire netball community. But even though we've been apart, netball can bring us all back together again. We've come down today to take you all through a very special training session. What has playing netball taught you about friendship? We're basically like sisters, constantly being uplifted. We do need our teammates sometimes and it's okay to ask for help when we need to pick me up. We're stronger as a team than we are apart. Origin and Netball Australia. Powered by teamwork, driven by good energy. 
We want to celebrate getting into the grand final with you all. Jump on melbournevixens.com.au and pre-order your premiership tee before Friday. You don't want to miss out on having this piece of history included in your wardrobe. The season may be over, but make sure you stay up to date during the off-season via the Melbourne Vixens social channels. Always entertaining stuff. Now time for a very special announcement throughout the season. Our partner Puma, in conjunction with our, our Vixens, have launched the Witness Fearless campaign. And across the finals, gave fans the chance to describe what's your fearless to win a $1,000 Puma prize pack and a 2021 Vixens membership. Here's a little refresher of what we we're playing for. The all-day tournaments on a Sunday. It's the monotonous rehab. It's the hundreds of shots at training. It's the overtime put in by the volunteers. It's the hundreds of passes at training. It's the 45-minute journey to the away court. It's facing that five-point comeback with three minutes to go. It's taking the crucial intercept. It's the last minute crash ball. It's our coach believing in us no matter what. It's in the eye of the reporter. What's your feelings? Watch your fearless campaign, a fantastic campaign Puma running. We now have our winner joining us on Vixens Live. It's a very warm welcome and congratulations to Lindsay. Lindsay, congratulations. Well done and welcome to Vixens Live. Hi, Pete. Hi, Pete. How are you? Good, Lindsay. How are you? Really good, thank you. Well, congratulations, Lindsay. First on behalf of Puma and the Melbourne Vixens, you've won your fearless. What's your fearless and your answer were... 8 a.m. winter games outside, the 30 to 40 minute drives five times a week for your girls who can't drive as yet. I'm sure many can relate to all of those. Tell us a little bit about your netball journey and your fearless sport and why you think netball is such a fearless sport. Well, both my girls have played netball since grade three. So uh, one's 18 and one's 15 now. So it's been going for a while. Um, they play up to five games a week and, um, you know, They've gone from local centres to all the way through to Parkville. Um, most people think netball is a non-contact sport um, with not a lot of skill involved. Um, I for one can tell those people, you obviously haven't watched a netball game before. Um, you know, the outside in winter, not being able to feel your fingers, um, you know, hot, sweaty days where you're getting burnt. Um, and then, you know, both my girls are defenders, so they put their bodies on the line every single game and they come off the court and they're covered in scratches, um, you know, sore, sore ribs, sore elbows. Um, but, like, that's what why it's a feeler sport. Absolutely it is, and we can't say it in front of teams, but, of course, defenders win premierships and all the plaudits go to the school. Um, it's been such an incredible season. Fearless is a, a fantastic word to describe 2020 and the Vixen season. Tell us. You've got the beanie on, you've got the scarf on as well, and of course, a fantastic T-shirt. Tell us how you felt on Sunday watching out Mighty Vixens. God, I was screaming, yelling, I was jumping up and down, I was crying, smiling, and I was all the time. Uh, it was such a relief for the girls to take home the trophy after everything they had to go through um, with relocating up to Queensland, um, thinking about all of their family down here in Melbourne, not being able to do anything. Um, it was a very well-deserved win. Now, I've got both all the fingers crossed, toes across as well, because hopefully with some restrictions lifting, it means that netball season might be back on. What does that mean to you and your girls, knowing that everything we've been through in 2020, that little bit of light at the end of the tunnel as it just warms up a bit, means we could be back out on court? Yeah, I'm really excited for the competition to start back up. There's not a lot of competitions that are actually starting back up, but I do know Parkville is trying to put together like a very short five week contest so the girls can start to reconnect again and um, feel part of a team. Um, I always complain about driving them to netball all the time, but I've actually realised now that I've actually really missed it. <laughs> <laughs> It's been 25 years since my parents drove me every day to cricket or footy and I can tell you, they'd still remind me. So that's all right. <laughs> You've got plenty of years to let them know that it's still going on. So your prize is a, a $1,000 Puma voucher. You get a membership to the Vixens next year as well. Just, just to wrap it up, tell us a little bit about what the Vixens mean to you, to you and your, 
two netballing mad daughters as well. What do the Vixens mean as, as role models and when you saw the Witness Fearless campaign? I think seeing the Vixens um, achieving so much in netball and also outside of netball helps my girls realise they can do it all. Um, the Vixens are so inspired with their determination and resilience that they show both on and off the court that not only are they role models in netball but also in life. I think that's very well said. Well, congratulations. You have done it. What's your fearless? The Witness Fearless campaign has been sensational from Puma. And with thanks to Puma and the Melbourne Vixens, you walk away with a membership and a thousand dollar voucher thanks to Puma. Congratulations, Lindsay, and good luck to you with your driving and the girls within netball as well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I've got one, I've got one daughter who is a learner, so I'll be getting her to do most of the driving now. <laughs> Great, Great idea. Don't worry about that. Very clever. See, netball mums are the cleverest. Well done, Lindsay. Congratulations once again on behalf of everyone from Melbourne Vixens and Puma, our amazing partner. Watch your fearless. What a campaign it has been. It means a lot to the Vixens. Make sure you're following Puma AU on Instagram where the Vixens and the hashtag Witness Fearless are very proud and very prominent on there as well. Well, Monday night, Teagues, we saw Sherelle McMahon medal night. It was a celebration, a little bit different, of course. A live stream for all of us down here in Melbourne, a little bit different up there, no doubt. Early in the night, though, someone made the decision to give Joe Weston a microphone, which is truly a really <laughs> brave decision. However, we captured it all, and this is some of the highlights as she was on the red car. Uh, good evening, and welcome to the Sherelle McMahon Medal. I'm Joe Weston, and I'm here on our blue red carpet um, ahead of the vote count. I'm just about to be joined by some of our star players. And first cab off the rank, is Miss Sasha McDonald, if you would join me here. So tell me a bit more about what you're wearing. <laughs> I love the sleeves. They make my arms appear longer than they are. Because <laughs> That's actually quite a useful like optical illusion. Like I could wear a dress like that on court. So like people wouldn't pass over. Uh, your arabesque looks longer. Mm. Um, next joining me on the carpet is one of the star players, uh, Miss Emily Maddox. How are you this evening? I'm good, thanks Jo. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Now, obviously this dress is beautiful. I've been knowing you were going to wear this since you bought it because we've been living together for the last 93 days. But if there was one thing that you could pull out from yesterday's game that was probably your favourite moment, can you pick just one? I think you ricocheting off Janelle. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have one of our retiring superstars, Miss Caitlin Thwaites. Come and join me in the frame. Um, how are you going this evening? Very well, thank you. Um, I love what you're wearing. Very practical with the shorts in case... Oh no, we're not allowed to dance, sorry. In case of dancing. Well, we're not allowed to dance. Um, but, but you know what, just in case that rule changes, I like the way that you're prepared. Um, it's nice and intimate, so we, we might cl close the doors and um, have our own little dance party in here later. Let's hope so. Don't tell everyone though. No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Caitlin. Um, all right. Well, the last beautiful guest I have on the red carpet this evening is Miss Taylor Honey. You are looking very beautiful in blue. We've all gone for florals. Tell me about um, how you're feeling. Well, look, being up in Queensland, I think we have to really dress with the weather and the florally, summery weather, that's a vibe. So I just thought we all should just embrace that. <laughs> and if you could pull out one thing of the entire Hub Life experience, what would you have to say is your favourite? Probably what happened yesterday, Joe. if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> um, well, that is all we've got from the red carpet this evening. And we're now going to head to the MC. Um, so Joe was hosting the red carpet. Did she know that you actually meant to ask questions and let people answer? When hosting no. the red carpet. Joe just Isn't likes to okay, right? especially when she has a microphone. <laughs> so I don't know who thought that was a good idea. And that's coming from me. Of all people to sledge her. That's from me. I mean, that's unbelievable. Anyway, well done, Joe. Great to see. Everything's funny when you win. It doesn't matter. Um, so unbelievable. It's great to see the girls dressed up. I loved how many comments were, oh, my gosh, look at the Vixens. They're actually really nice. Because no one sees Everyone just sees the tracky pants and the warm-up tees, and then the dress, and that's it. So great to see you all glammed up. Who did you think was going to win as you headed in to, for the night on Monday night? Look, I did think Kate Maloney was going to be a top t um, contender, and obviously she was the one that um, received it in the end. But knowing that it, the defenders were going to be right behind her, so my predictions were kind of spot on. They were, which is always easy when I ask you after they've already been announced, but that's okay. <laughs> this, this you don't know, Teagues. You're going to give me one sentence or one word on all of our winners 
throughout the course of the evening. I want some quick fire answers from you. Rookie of the year, okay. Ali Smith. Rookie. Rookie of the year, Ali Smith. Yeah, that was my word. Rookie. I'm giving you one no. word. Okay. Fun. Tell me about tell me about Ali. She's good fun. Okay. You're not very good She's at this good fun, you need to get Hard working and um just gives everything a crack. Outstanding service award, Simone McKinnis. OAM. OAM. Uh passionate that one and um just yeah, wants wants the best. Excellence in sport and life, but not necessarily red carpet microphone work. Joe Weston. Doesn't that just sum it up, watching that video? <laughs> it does. Coach, no, no, Coach's like, Award. Just on that, Joe's been doing some amazing work. Yeah, that, that is actually true. Away from the court, she's been doing very, very well and studying Thank hard you. as well and doing a lot of things. Um, Coach's Award, not Emily Mannix, unbelievably. Caitlin Thwaites. Mannix was Devo, but, you know, Katie Thwaites. Yeah. It's just out of nowhere, running goal attack. What a legend. So she deserves yeah, Simone it. Did it. Simone gave us the insight that was a chance to happen. Player of the finals, Joe Weston. Yeah, just a star, that one. Knuckling down and being a pest, actually, in a good way. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Jewel runners up was Joe Weston and Kate Eddy. Yeah, Kate, she's so cute. Uh, but <laughs> just... Keep pushing on that one. The hard work she did to get her foot right just for that game, even though it wasn't really right, but it was right enough for her to get out there. Love it. And finally, our ceramic man medalist and co-captain, Kate Maloney. Strong, hardworking, and just that leader in the team. What a legend. So there you go. There's our summary. And all the girls there, premiership medals are on. Dressed to the nines and with a moon boot on there as well from Keddy as well, which is always fun. What a night. Did you enjoy the celebration, Teagues? It's, I mean, I know it's been a long, hard slog to get there, but when you win premiership medals around the neck, and it was different, it was a, a much, far more intimate affair than we're used to, but did you enjoy the Monday night getting back together with everyone? Yeah, we did enjoy it. There was only four tables. It was so weird, but it was so little and it was – uh, it was, um, yeah, really nice just to spend that time um, just with us and the staff uh, out of everything that we've gone through, the highs and the lows, the challenges, the enjoyment, the fun stuff, just to sit there that night, um, enjoy a nice meal, reflect back on the season that we've had and obviously um, give those awards out. Uh, yeah, it was uh, a really lovely evening. Well, we look forward to doing it bigger and better, of course, in 2021. Hopefully we're allowed to get everyone back there and let's celebrate <laughs> once again. Of course, the talking point has been, aside from the wonderful premiership on Sunday, but leading up to the premiership were the two retirees, one, of course, co-hosting me, co-hosting with me here this evening. Can't wait to have these two in front of us all so we can celebrate properly with our Melbourne Vixens fan base. Firstly, Teague, you've been a part of the club for 11 years. We were there at your first game and unfortunately couldn't be there at your last, but I was very happy to watch it when I was there. It's been a lot different on match day, rocking up and not seeing the flame red hair, getting a little high five on your way through, talking a bit of footy as we do as well. But you've just given us so many highlights over the last 11 seasons. You're going to be missed by Vixen's family, Vixen's fans. The Vixen's MC will miss you a lot as well. But we do wish you all the best for whatever life has in store for you. And Josh, of course, will be very pleased to have you back. And I do believe it might be his birthday today. And he'd hate if That's he doesn't get a right. shout-out. So happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to Mr. Phil. Um, you know what we should do, Teeks? Whilst you're here, let's take a look yeah. at some of these amazing highlights of the last 11 years. Let's have a look now. Tegan, someone who has been with the Vixens right from the start and you can just tell her dedication, her passion and her drive to stay at this level for so long is something that we need to commend her for. It hasn't always been easy. You've had injuries along the way. It's been a real roller coaster ride, but I think that's what you should be very proud of, how you've always fought back. I think that speed, that agility, that passion and just the way that she goes out there and you can tell that she's playing for her teammates and she really wants the win for her team. I think you'll always remember 2014 when we got to win with the Vixens, you got player of the match. You made the Diamonds, went to the Com Games and got to experience your first test match over there and then to win a gold medal. It was just an enormous year. Congratulations to you on your retirement. 
What an incredible career that you have had and I feel very privileged that I've got to play alongside you. I look forward to seeing what you do next, teams, but that smiling face, we'll certainly miss that on the court. We're going to miss you so much. You are everything that the Vixen stands for and I just wish you the very best of luck. Look after that body. I really hope that you can still walk after leaving us, but thank you for all the memories. It's been amazing, amazing, and I just wish you the very, very best of luck and congratulations. There's no praise quite like praise from peers. They know what you've been through to get there. What does it mean to hear both B, who you took over the Vixen's record from, and Lizzie Watson, who's a co-captain in a premiership year, what does it mean to hear just some of those words, which I'm no doubt echo the sentiments of everyone? Oh, it's just really special. I mean, I didn't know that they were doing that. And then when you see them pop up and I said, oh, Liz, when she started talking, and I said, oh, B, when they were playing at the Shrell McMahon. Like, it's so lovely to see them take the time um, to answer questions or talk about other players and obviously in this instance it was about myself and um yeah it just shows um yeah that it's really lovely um that they have things to say and and it's uh yeah it just makes you feel a little bit special the sign of a superstar in a team sport you've never made it about yourself and we thought we better have one minute where we can make it about you Teeks, <laughs> just before you right off into the sunset with your second premiership medal of course katie thwaites also retiring after 18 years at the elite level started with the kestrels then of course an inaugural member with the melbourne vixens team in 2008 she's been a huge part of the club her leadership as well especially throughout this season it's been second to none we certainly wish her all the best these are just some of the videos that were played on monday night as well just in case you missed them you know as well as anyone teagues talk us through katie you spent the last 14 weeks with her as well just talk us through katie retiring just an amazing career yeah i mean i started with katie when i first um, got on the court with the vixen in 2010 and she said to me if there's a penalty shot you're going to take it and put the ball down when it happened and i was so nervous but um yeah it's been amazing to start with her and now to finish with her and rooming with her for the last three months um i just yeah i'm really lucky to share this time and and support each other which is what we did to get through hub life and uh to go out in that grand final um yes is uh really special she's done some amazing work has so much care for others and yeah super lucky to finish with her well, katie we certainly wish you and all your family all the best i'm sure that neither of those two legends will be lost to netball we need to make sure that players and people of that calibre stay with us in the sport. And I'm sure that will be the case. To Tegan Phillip and to Katie Thwaites, congratulations on amazing careers. Teagues, thanks so much for co-hosting Vixens Live with us this evening, Premiership Edition. I didn't think this would happen 13, 14 weeks ago. I hoped it would. And here we are, Premiership medal around the neck. Go on, how does it feel? How does it feel? We just spent 40 minutes talking about this. Look at that. I know. Okay, so a career, uh, in, a career in modeling is that, is that on the horizon? First? What was that? A career in modeling on the on the horizon oh. under a t-shirt modeling maybe down the Billerie. Just this t-shirt though, just this one. All right, so one garment specialist. <laughs> um, sum up, sum up twenty twenty season for us. Sum up the year, but certainly sum up the season. Give us a couple of sentences. How are you feeling now? As we wrap up our final Vixens Live for twenty twenty. Tell us how are you feeling. Oh, I'm just, it's, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. It's been such a challenging year with some really awesome times and then some really difficult times and trying to stay connected with our fans. Um, yeah, it's been uh, such an experience that no one will ever forget um, with so many amazing memories and, yeah, just really grateful to be a part of what has happened. Not just a part, a crucial part, a dual premiership <laughs> part of the Melbourne Vixens. Congratulations, Teague. Thanks for joining us on Vixens Live. I know that the team and everyone would have loved to have watched the Vixens run around at Melbourne Arena in the grand final. But hopefully you knew that we were there with you in spirit and voice. The couches were very, very loud and a million people can't be wrong as they tuned in to 66-64 as we won. 
Thank you to all about 2020 members for their support, both on all the social media channels, the videos, the pictures, the words of support. You know that the team loved hearing them and the encouragement coming all the way from Melbourne when we were doing it pretty tough down here. Thank you to all of our wonderful support, support partners as well for their support during 2020. Special mention to tonight's partner, Flight Centre. Wake up confident with Flight Centre. Over 40 years travel experience now with new flexible booking options. They're the real MVP. We know that you'll be involved in nipple in some capacity and we'll make sure that we see you, Teagues. Don't worry about that. And when we get the chance to celebrate the Premiership, you will be front and centre and we'll get to celebrate all over again. Hope you've enjoyed. Everyone who's tuned in, thank you so much. Hope you've enjoyed Thursday nights on Vixens Live. It's been my absolute privilege and pleasure to host it each and every week. And who knows, might even get the gig in 2021. We've never lost the Premiership season when Vixens Live has been up and about. Thanks so much for joining us. Please stay safe, stay well, and as we always say, go the mighty Vixens! See you guys.